Okay guys, so I've got a pretty interesting one for you today. I'm going to be testing my context engineering method, which you can get completely for free on GitHub. Definitely check this method out for yourselves, change it to make it work for you, etc, etc. I'm going to be going through the entire process today. I'm going to show you absolutely everything. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to show you what this actually looks like. And I'm going to compare it to results from other tests. Now, I will start this video by saying that I still think that one-shotting things might not be the best way to do things, but I'm also very, very ready to change my mind. And I have to test things because if we can one-shot pretty much everything in terms of functionality for a complete AI app, then yeah, I mean, things are really, really getting insane. So this version does a huge amount of research. It does a stage one and a stage two implementation. It has separate .md documents for each step of the implementation. That's so that we don't overload the context. And also I'm just gonna add a few things here to the research phase. And I'm gonna change around these .md files a little bit. And we're gonna see if we can't get uh, an insane result. So I'm going to compare the final result to what I've done so far. So I've tried, I tried Cole's method out of the box. It implemented two agents and they were kind of placeholder agents. They weren't real. This was a complete failure, I'd say. The second one, which I released the video on yesterday, I ended up executing the PRP and I actually got a pretty good result. It did, I think, eight or seven agents, maybe. However, there was a slight mistake on it. Um, so I've just changed a little bit of the prompt just because I want the agents to be like fully agentic and not really use programmatic like stuff, but every decision that it should, that should be made should be made over multiple prompts and like an agentic system. Another thing as well is that despite like even hard coding, uh, or like basically if I go to the research, like I, if, if I do models, look, I hard coded this LLM models, I always look for the models page, blah, 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 and find the model that's mentioned in initial.md. So I'm going to try one more thing here um, to get it to use GPT 4.1 mini. It's a bit of a weird fix, but like I actually find that putting stuff in the first prompt to Claude works extremely well. So I'm going to say use or only research and use GPT 4.1 mini. I promise you, you it exists and it has a 1 million context window, which is vital. Okay, so like you can see here, I've kind of jangled a few things together in the initial prompt that you send to Claude. And then I'm gonna show you this entire process right here, right now. So we'll start a new conversation. Actually, no, we won't. We will use the same, um, Thing here right this was the previous run so we'll just do exactly the same thing I've deleted everything that that one created it's making me log in which is kind of annoying but okay so I see that hooks have also just been released as well I have been looking into them I probably will have a video on that very very soon I don't know if you'll see this video first or the hooks video but yeah my initial DMD is still the same as it was the the first day I set all this up nothing has changed there we're just going to generate a PRP here so we'll do generate PRP initial md and this should create oh no sorry i need to run my first prompt so we'll do that first okay so as you can see the prp creation process summary is great <clears throat> huge amount of research two-phase approach um you know all that good stuff good amazing there's documentation links etc etc right and i will do generate prp initial md and then when it starts doing the research, I'm gonna say uh, this here. Can you spin up multiple research agents to do all of this at the same time? So we'll just wait. And then kind of the final stage of this, which I haven't done yet, but like, I'm just looking at this now. I was just watching this video here, pretty useful video. Um, he, he did basically how I would have done it anyway, though. He just took the documentation, right? So, um, anthropic hooks documentation. It just gave it this document and said, I want to make a hook. Can you help me? So like my idea here is like every time before it codes something, there's a hook that takes it back to the research.md files, right? And it chooses from that list of files, selects any relevant ones and then codes, right? 
instead of trying to code having this context but not necessarily reading it or not necessarily reading the right one or not having the ability to specify that right there so that's that's what i'm going to be working on uh just so you know so look out for that video very very soon i'm sure someone is now going to take that idea and make a video on it that's totally fine that's just you know it is what it is i'm pretty sure if you oh look at this this is pretty interesting i'm pretty sure you could do this what i was just talking about with um hooks it looks like basically hooks are just a way to um, kind of personalize your experience with Claude Code. Okay, so this isn't what this video is actually about, but like, I mean, while we're waiting, I may as well just give this away too, and I probably will then work on this myself. But like, you can absolutely create hooks that check a directory for relevant documentation, read it before coding. You'd want to use pre-tool use. So the pre-tool use is before it codes, it triggers, so like write, edit, or multi-edit, and automatically reads relevant documentation files. So yeah, I mean, it says it's possible. It says it's easy as well. So how does this work? You, you save a Python file. Okay, interesting. To your Claude code environment. I'm probably going to test this while, we're <laughs> while I'm making this other video, guys, honestly, because this shit takes ages anyway. You can just see what this is doing now if I go over to... Visual Studio Code and open one of these, you'll see it's creating all of these different um, files, right? So function calling, models didn't load. Sometimes they don't load, sometimes they do. Prompt engineering didn't load either. There's something wrong with OpenAI or like they're, they're using Cloudflare or something. This one has also not got loads. Okay, no, th this is fine. This is, this is working. Okay, so yeah, the, I'll let this run. At the same time, I'm probably just going <laughs> to... Probably going to open up another one and we'll see what is going on with hooks. So I guess this video is kind of like, it's molded into something to do with hooks just because like it does seem so damn interesting. So I just want to see kind of what's possible here. So, so if I do uh, CD and then CD, what's it called? And then I do Claude. If I just do Claude, yeah, if I just do Claude, okay. So right now what I have is a list of .md files in a Claude code environment. Can I add this hook? So can I do slash hook, yes. Select hook event, pre-tool use. Input to command is JSON of all. Okay. <laughs> Not really sure what that means. How can I add this hook to you? Is it just going to make shit up or is it actually going to do it? Wait, is this? Yeah, it is Python. Okay, so Claude code hooks automatically read relevant documentation before coding operation. Okay. So I'm trying to add this to my settings.json at the moment. Oh yeah, shit. So I do have a hook here. Okay, interesting. Okay. Let's see. Oh man. Oh yeah, wow, there it is. This is the hook in action right here. Look. Now it didn't quite work, but Read and output documentation, print documentation first. Create a helpful message that includes the documentation feedback message. Interesting. Then output JSON response to approve the operation. Doc content. So it didn't actually work fully, but like it, it's it's pretty much almost there. Can you make sure it works and shows documentation for writing? So this is before it writes, it's actually checking the documentation. This is the last stage of what I'm trying to build, I would say. So hooks came at a perfect time. I will have a full video on this when I've when I create this entire system. Um, but I probably will include this in the GitHub and it probably will be already there. So so one very interesting thing here, right? It's saying that it worked. I just want to double check it worked. But above here, it used GPT-4, which is not even a model, I don't think, anymore, right? Whereas now it used GPT-4.0, so it does seem to be taking in some information. Okay, so apparently to see this in action, I can run uh, Claude in debug mode. So I'm in... Oh, wait. Um, 
Can you, can you do both? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm in debug mode. Can I see it? Wait. I do control R now, no. Oh, damn. Fuck. It actually worked. What the hell? Okay. So, yeah, look. It tried to write... And then it blocked the write and sent the documentation first and then r tried to write again. That's pretty interesting. So it does work. Uh, I definitely need some refinement, et cetera, et cetera. But hooks are extremely interesting. Okay, so we only managed to get a phase one out of this. It tried to output a phase two, but it was actually too big. So um, output slightly less as you went over the 32k token limit, which is crazy. I think it's probably way too big. Um, I mean, 800 lines is fine. That's a bit much. So this is what it came out with for phase one. Now, I really want you guys to picture a world in which we have hooks set up, and every time it tries to code something new, it reads the research that it's got here. That's what I'm trying to build here. If you want to help me build it, I'll tell you what you can do right now. You can go to school and you can sign up to the school. That allows me to be much more free with how I use my time, etc. Uh, the more people that sign up to that, the better, uh, because it means that I can actually focus on, on making these things, right? The other thing you can do is you can like this video, tell people about this method, etc., etc. I'm working on this now. I suspect that tomorrow's video will be uh, this hook, fully integrated into this system. And then instead of like doing research here, it should just tell it what .md files to check, right? Because that helps with context, right? So one of the problems with having such a large amount of research is obviously context. So I'm constantly coming up with new ways to do this, guys. I know this might seem a bit confusing the way I'm doing it, but I'm including you guys in this process. I'll tell you right now, this is all correct. This is actually beautiful. It's really, really well implemented, etc. Like it's all here. So yeah, there it is. You can see right here this new hook, and I'll find a way to give you this, guys. Whether it's GitHub or whatever, or you just follow the process that I went through in this video. Every single time it tries to write, it will block the write. It will look through the research directory using keywords, and it will find things to check here. Right. I think that's an extremely effective method right there. Okay, so in this current method, which you can get on GitHub right now, we now have a phase two PRP, right? It's right here. Let's see what GPT model it used. Thank, thank God for that. Let's see what Sonnet model it used. You absolute, ah, I hate AI. I really fucking hate AI. Claude Sonnet 4, Claude Sonnet 4. Claude, Claude 3 Sonnet, Hey, what? Even the comment is right here, bro. Like, it's a joke. What is... What is wrong with AI, dude? Normally it does Sonic 4 as well. It's so annoying. Let's just see. You are... Okay, this is, this is good. This is really good. This is really, really good. Yeah, this is good. This is really, really good research. You can just tell by looking at it. This is a high level language, so I, I think PHP is a high level language, right? So it should be readable by anyone. Uh, so let's do execute PRP and then phase dash one dot ND, right? And then we would let that run. Okay, so before we run the execution of the PRP, just saying so you, know, you want to run a compact, I completely forgot about that stage. So I'm just running a compact now and then I'm going to run it again, basically. But you can see this is its to do list. So it's actually said implement all eight agent skeletons, which again is a massive improvement. Okay, so I'm just going to say execute PRP and then uh, I need to give it phase one.md. And then I'm going to give it an instruction. I'm not sure this is going to work, but ignore any current code. This is a fresh project. Okay, let's see if it does this properly this time. Okay, so I'm just going to start a brand new Claude conversation here. We're going to test this hook out. So we've got a hook here. This will be on the GitHub as well. This whole thing that I'm building, um, everything is just going to be pushed to GitHub constantly. You'll have full access to everything. Okay, guys. 
don't need to worry about that. Right now, it's this uh, in this state. I will push this. I'm still continuing to test it though, guys. So this isn't fully ready, I wouldn't say. But if I say, write me a piece of open AI code, right? Let's just see what it does here. I don't really care what the open AI code is. Don't do that. What? Weird. Write me a piece of a, a random piece of open AI code. Don't look at any code in the in the directory. Okay, blocked by hook. Pretty cool. What did that just say? Okay. I see the hook is stressing the review of the ones and let me check the research story to use the correct API format. Okay, I mean, it works, to be honest with you. <laughs> this is fine. Um, yeah, I mean, interesting. So it, it did read the, um, it read the .md manually, but I mean, that's not a huge issue, to be honest with you. I see the document shows a different API format. Let me create the file using the correct API. Interesting, very, very interesting. Oh, it got blocked again. Fuck. Okay, there it is. A completely fresh conversation with OpenAI and it used GPT 4.1. That is actually a huge improvement. If you don't know, if you go on any Claude code conversation and say, write me a random piece of OpenAI code, it will not use GPT 4.1. It will use an older model. Overall, guys, I'm going to leave the video there. I'm going to push all of these latest changes to the GitHub. You have access to everything. Feel free to support me in whatever way you want, whether it's just sharing this video around or subscribing to the school or whatever the fuck you want, honestly, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. I'll keep working on this, guys. I reckon three or four more days, and this is going to be the best um, AI generation system in th that's possible. Thanks, guys, and peace out.